Uh, from Manchester, Haras Rafiq, chief exec of the counter extremism think tank, the Quilliam Foundation. Hello to you. Thank you for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. You've heard what the Prime Minister had to say. What was your response? Uh, I think the Prime Minister uh, made a fairly, fairly strong speech, but the thing is, okay, we've heard this before. I remember hearing this after 7 7 with Tony Blair, uh, and then we had political inconsistency. Gordon Brown went a different direction. Then we had the coalition government. Um, we only had half a prevent strategy for about five years. Um, the last couple of years ago, David Cameron decided to split the strategy into a countering, uh, preventing extremism strategy and a countering extremism strategy, and we still haven't seen the second half. So, for me at this moment in time, it, it's uh, yes, they're strong words, but that's all they are at this moment in time. Uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to listen to what the Prime Minister had to say, and we're going to come back to you on that. Stand by. While the recent attacks are not connected by common networks, they are connected in one important sense. They are bound together by the single evil ideology of Islamist extremism that preaches hatred, sows division and promotes sectarianism. It is an ideology that claims our Western values of freedom, democracy and human rights are incompatible with the religion of Islam. It is an ideology that is a perversion of Islam and a perversion of the truth. It is a perversion of Islam, of course, but it is one that is being practised uh, by a significant number of young men, I think it's fair to say, who seem to learn their deadly art uh, in countries in the Middle East and then come back to the United Kingdom and carry out the atrocities that we saw last night. Uh, the Prime Minister talking about copycat uh, attacks. How do we start to try to deal with those? I think, that, I think there's two parts. The, fir the first part is looking at it from a security aspect, and that's um, not prevent, that's protect. Really looking at beefing up our security apparatus, uh, putting uh, more resources into the hands of our agencies, our police, uh, MI5, etc. Then there's the other part. There's a part of where we actually look at real prevention. From a governmental perspective, we still have different government departments doing different things. There's no one person coordinating that. We need someone to coordinate within the government, reporting into the next prime minister, uh, the whole counter-extremism effort from the government. The other thing is that a, a lot of this ideology and this theology, because let's not forget, it is Islamist political ideology that inspires and merges with Salafi theology. That's what we have to give us Salafi jihadism. It is not an insignificant number uh, of Muslims. There aren't an insignificant number of Muslims that follow this type of Salafi uh, theology in the UK and around the world. There are places here in the UK, there are institutions, uh, we have these things going online, people that are teaching this hate-based them and us. ISIS and Al-Qaeda don't actually uh, radicalize anybody. What they actually do is they take people that have been radicalized by community organizations, in some cases some mosques, I hasten to say some mosques, uh, some organizations that are working with councils up and down the country, and that's maybe where the Prime Minister was talking about embarrassing conversations, because we still have some councils refusing to admit what the problem is and working with Islamists. And we need to counter this, we need to identify it, we need to name it and we need to challenge it. You, I, everybody else, in the same way that we challenge fascism and racism. That's the thing we need to do. A person doesn't have to be Muslim to challenge this because this affects all of us. If we don't challenge it and we don't um, admit that we have a problem, we're not going to win this battle, Kay. But we know we need to do that, don't we? Uh, it's, it's obvious, given what's happened over the last three months, 34 people dead in three months. Um, we're seeing copycat uh, attacks and, uh, you know, please God, we don't see any more, but that is the worry for the government. So how do we start to tackle it? Okay, we need to look at, first of all, providing resilience within families. There are toolkits uh, that are available, uh, that have been sponsored and promoted by the EU and the UK government. More training, more upskilling for families, more upskilling for school teachers, more upskilling for people, police officers even, to be able to look for the signs of radicalisation. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, then to be able to do something about it. Families can be the first line of defence. Teachers can be the second line of defence. There are a whole range of people. Once we see this particular uh, ideology taking root within youngsters, 
then we challenge it. How do we challenge it? We challenge it by promoting our own values. We challenge it by building resilience. We challenge it by saying to youngsters, you know what, yes, you can have a certain political viewpoint, but if it doesn't fit in with the viewpoint of what we as a society, and I say we collectively, adhere to, then we will challenge it. That's not going on, and this needs to happen in families, at homes, at schools, and yes, at mosques as well. There are still mosques up and down the country and institutions that are inviting hate preachers. The Charity Commission needs to do more. The Charity Commission needs to, you know, show its teeth a little bit more, rather than just saying, you know what, well, let's just train the trustees. If mosques and institutions are against our values and they refuse to, uh, uh, to stop inviting hate preachers. We, we, you know, we look at the Manchester attacks recently. There was a mosque in Manchester that Salman Abedi used to go to. The mosque in question was exposed a week and uh, a few days actually after the interview that it gave of inviting hate preachers, of inviting somebody that actually said the only true Muslim is a mujahid, a holy warrior. These things need to be challenged. We Muslims need to do more as well. And, and platitudes and, you know, pray for London, pray for Manchester just doesn't cut it anymore. It's good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed.